Okay, so for week five of Winter Anime, the shows do continue. A lot of cool developments for most of these shows. Dangerous in My Heart had a cool emotional moment. Loved it so much. Undead Unlucked. This kind of like a big turning point, apparently. Free Run was nice, very wholesome, delicious in the dungeon. These monsters are getting more creative, making my mouth water. And also Solo Leveling, my dude Chin Wu. If it wasn't edgy enough before, my man turned into a super edge lord. So yeah, let's get started. Let's talk about some shows. So for Solo Leveling Episode 6, Jin Wu and his friend, the rich guy, got trapped in this dungeon. And now they're like getting attacked by the spider so it's kind of like a big strong spider it's c rank so you have to be b rank or above to kind of like be able to defeat it but yeah the guys didn't know that yeah this dude is him so he starts fighting the spider and it's kind of difficult because it's armored so yeah jinwoo doesn't really have the penetrating power yet he has this magic venom sword that he's using but he can't pierce the shell but then i'm like bro don't you see the eyeballs right there the juicy eyeballs so yeah, he listened to me because Jinwoo actually like uses his like speed. He has like a dash ability and kind of like dashes, stabs its eyeball. Also, there's a cool thing. He has like energy, like a fatigue system. One of the daily quest rewards like replenishes all his fatigue instantly. So I thought that was cool. So he's like storing these rewards and then maybe he can unleash them later. So yeah, this dude has so many avenues to become overpowered. It gets paralyzed and it dies. So good job by Jinwoo. Also, after that, we see the actual party leaders coming in through the roof. They're surprised that Jinwoo kind of took down the spider. And his friends also kind of scared of Jinwoo because he's like, oh, is this like a smurf? Is he like a fake ranker? Is he lying about his rank to kind of like bully and murder people? So yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. But yeah, Jinwoo, he's like a nice guy. He would never kill anybody. <laughs> Unless these dudes try to kill him first. So yeah, the they want to kind of kill them. And then if you die in a dungeon, it doesn't really get reported. Your body just disappears. So yeah, they think they can get away with it. But yeah, Jinwoo is him. And then he has like an emergency quest pop up. So he doesn't really want to murder these guys, but he has no choice because it's kill or be killed because his quest is to kill all these guys attacking him. Jinwoo also realizes something like a mechanic of this like kind of game quest he's in where basically some dude wants to keep him alive. Like all these quests are trying to like strengthen him for survival. So it looks like someone's kind of using him for some end goal. Jinwoo doesn't really have too much time to like contemplate that, but like that's like in the back of his mind. And he's like, okay, fine. I'm going to keep doing these. Let's kill or be killed. I'm going to survive. A lot of like cool edgy music as Jinwoo kind of kills these six people attacking him it's kind of crazy he like stabs them cuts them up with the venom swords poisons them and then yeah cuts their heads off as well so you know I me mean? well deserved i love the music here very sick one of my favorite episodes i think of solo leveling so far so yeah i mean this anime is very entertaining it's doing what it's advertised and i guess we'll see what's gonna happen next there's a lot more characters being set up they're like trying to do some training program maybe jinwoo will be involved Okay, so for the dangers in my heart, season two, episode six, super cute episode. I loved it a lot. I think it was very popular because Yamado, she admits that she likes Kyotaro. <laughs> so I guess finally, maybe something will happen because of this. Maybe the next episode will be like a misunderstanding. No, I didn't mean that. But yeah, a lot, a lot of cool spicy developments happening. The main reason is that they're changing classes because the next semester is happening. So they have to like kind of do a farewell speech and everything, like a whole ceremony. And Kyotaro gets chosen to be the kind of speaker of the class. <laughs> so yeah, he has to kind of speak in the aud auditorium in front of everybody which is like a lot of pressure for this guy so yeah he's super scared he's kind of writing the speech doing like a mock rehearsal but he can like barely talk Yamada wants to see him succeed so yeah it's all pretty cute he kind of tries to hype himself up like everyone is supporting him they want to see him do well so yeah it must be nice having all these people support you he also gets a haircut to kind of like you know change himself a bit but like his hair still looks the same he just has like some fade on the sides which I mean is pretty sick anyway while everyone's supporting him he goes to school during the ceremony day but he forgets his speech at home he kind of wrote it down on a piece of paper and he switched it up so he kind of calls his sister to come through to deliver it i'm like bro can't she just text you the picture maybe that'll be a bit faster but now she has to kind of like drive her way to school and then kind of like trespass in to deliver the speech but it's kind of too late he's already up on stage so instead he kind of just you know does it off the dome uh, good job my guy um i believed in you so he also has like his imaginary friend kind of hyping him up so yeah i mean that gives him the confidence to like kind of keep going he kind of gives like a, a cool speech everyone hears him he's very loud and it goes very well you know nothing crazy just like a dude kind of putting himself out there being more confident and you know Yamada loves it as well uh the funny thing is that he kind of passes out into the nurse's office right after so then who is there to like be by his side it's Yamada so yeah they're kind of chilling together but then there's some other guy coming in so yeah we saw him a lot he's a dude that stalked Yamada from like the first episode season one so yeah he's like super creepy he's kind of like a playboy Yamada does not like him he kind of like admits his feelings to her because it's like you know the last day they might switch classes and everything and then Yamada rejects his ass do you know why she's like I'm sorry 
married or someone I like already. Oh my god, did she just admit it? Because who else could it be? This dude you're hanging out with all the time. So yeah, I mean, like I said, it's not a real confession, so they might forget about it. Like, this is the classic romance anime trope. So I doubt that they'll just like go out next episode. They'll definitely string us along. This is gonna be like a oh, misunderstanding. But it was still super cute hearing her say that. So yeah, I mean, I guess the anime continues. Good developments. And I can't wait to get more. Okay, so for Undead Unluck episode 18, we get so many lore dumps, plot reveals. This is kind of like manga readers telling me this is where the real story starts all that other shit they're doing like round table stuff union doing quests nah <laughs> we're, we're doing time loops and shit we're doing like multiple timelines it's kind of funny so a pretty solid exposition although this episode was a recap episode <laughs> you can't tell me otherwise because like 90 percent of the content was just like reused scenes they showed like flashbacks they're like oh remember when you did that oh this is the actual explanation of why that happened <laughs> so i mean I, I do like when they do recap episodes because you know to save resources if they don't need to and then if they actually add stuff to the episode like like this one did that's not the worst but anyway like yeah the real plot development happens when yeah uh billy he stole the round table he stole the arc but they have the apocalypse book so it kind of mind broke fuko the last time it kind of gave her a lot of these memories of a different timeline so then yeah her brain is back to normal so it looks like apocalypse didn't do any like kind of permanent damage and then yeah it's all good juice is kind of explaining herself now because she realizes that shit has gone bad and what she's hiding is that this world is on a time loop so basically after the hundred penalty after after Ragnarok, the god kind of like destroys the world and rebuilds it again. So yeah, I guess there's nothing we can really do about it besides kill god or die. So yeah, there's there's still two constants though in each time loop, which is Juiz, because she can kind of like use the arc to survive the timeline for some reason. And also Andy, since he's immortal, so he also can't die. So it also kind of tells us who Victor is, because Victor was part of the original timeline, but I guess he kind of locked himself away. And then Victor and Juiz were also like kind of lovers. So yeah, it's all kind of spicy, very interesting. Interesting. Joyce kind of like regrets hiding this. Billy kind of found out this timeline. So that's why he's kind of going rogue, joining up with the villains. But yeah, this was kind of like crazy story. I'm so excited. I love time loops. Uh, this opens up so many possibilities because if they fail this timeline, they're just going to be back to normal. Although like, I don't know if the same characters will be there. Will they inherit the same powers? We don't know how it works like all the way yet, but it's all very cool. We see Joyce trying to like commit seppuku. So she offers to do that as recompense. But yeah, you know, Shen kind of looks at her and then power kind of stops her and then everyone's like nah bro we're all in this together so yeah, they're kind of like going on together they brought like a new round table out of stone just like doing it outside like kind of like camping and yeah basically they're kind of like continuing their mission basically they have to you know defeat all the uma seasons they have to retrieve the arc from billy stop billy from like kind of killing people because he kind of wants to drop bombs onto the umas she tasks fuko and andy to like kind of gather this magic book that might have like information so that looks like their first step and then yeah besides that you know story continues very cool anime okay so for free rent and beyond journeys end episode 22 what a chill episode they kind of have three days break before the kind of rest of the magical exam continues so yeah it's looking good for free run and the team but yeah there's still like a lot of main characters showing up like the green haired girl and also the old man and then the murdering dude from the north so yeah they're all kind of hanging out in the city and they all like kind of meet each other in the same restaurant so i, I thought that was like very cute but yeah, pretty much just like a cute episode very slice of life focused sure remembers going here 80 years ago with their party and the chef here was like yeah this restaurant is gonna still be here it won't change the food quality will be the best and the free run's kind of sad because the food quality did change but it changed for the better it tastes better so she eats a lot of steaks they have a very cute get together we see the old man also there with his party but yeah it looks like the problem is the proctor is like that little girl we see so no one has passed her exam so most people seem kind of sad Although, yo, Free Ren is hers, so I, I feel like she's gonna pass. Maybe Fern will pass as well, maybe not. We just gotta see. Her exam seems kind of interesting, because she says she doesn't want to, like, have people attack each other. So yeah, maybe they fight something, maybe. Oh, yeah, we just gotta see. <laughs> One cool thing was, like, the green-haired girl. We see, like, her magical power is that she can copy other people's abilities, but she has to understand them first. Also, after that, we see, like, the two girls with the ice and water magic kind of fighting with each other. So yeah, that was cute. We see Stark kind of teaming up with the murdering dude. And then they kind of like defeat a monster together. So yeah, Stark also gets something to do. He was kind of like being a bit lazy when Free Ren and Fern were out. But yeah, once Fern is back in, uh, Stark has to shape up again. So yeah, another cute episode. The story continues. Can't wait to get more of this magic exam. All right, so for the Apothecary Diaries episode 18. Kind of crazy episode because here we see Mau Mau's mom and dad. 
a whole reveal blood related mom and dad that's so crazy so it looks like her mom was a famous consort in a vertigus house but then yeah she got pregnant with mama that kind of like decreased her value she also has syphilis so she's kind of like really sick now and then yeah mama's taking care of her but yeah mama gets like a memory in her past that like her mom actually tried to murder her when she was a baby so okay, goddamn bro that's kind of crazy and we also see like who her dad is his name is lacken he's like the dude with the monocle and yeah basically i guess he kind of impregnated her because she didn't want to be with him which is very sad but yeah he also wants to see mama mama doesn't want anything to do with him but yeah he keeps bothering jinshi about her so yeah it seems like pretty tragic so far they're setting up a lot of cool things i'm really excited because anime does have so many good pay Offs. but yeah a lot of crazy developments i i do have like a sense of dread because one of the girls from the vertigus house she she's like the really skilled girl that can like you know play games and stuff it seems that lacken has taken an interest in her which is very bad because he might impregnate you reduce your value and just like ghost you and now your life is probably destroyed so yeah hopefully that doesn't happen but we just got to see a lot of cool developments as apothecary diaries does continue all right so for delicious in a dungeon episode six there's kind of these crab mimics they look so delicious well first we see the thief he kind of has to unlock the mimics first which he does not want to do because he has like a bad time with mimics they kind of kill him he does not want to die right now so it's kind of like a cool episode with him explaining why he hates mimics the hard life of kind of navigating through a dungeon avoiding all these traps and then yeah he gets trapped in a room with the mimic and then just like all these spike traps and shit around him so he kind of like he cleverly evades the mimic with all his like powers and then barely gets out of the room alive so yeah i guess they get to eat crab mimics for dinner also yeah before that there was like kind of like this kind of weird thing that happened happened where there was like this cursed painting and then there's like some crazy ass shit that happens in a painting like the royal king gets born he gets assassinated and then there's like an elf in the painting as well so the elf kind of tracks him through each dimension he's kind of like going through time while going through future paintings so yeah two cool stories here the party gets to eat more food as we kind of continue on this journey okay so for chain soldier episode six cool episode good fight loved it so much so yeah, the tournament kind of continues we see shushu the blonde girl that can grow really big as her fighting power fighting the sleepy girl so yeah the sleepy girl's ability is kind of crazy she can turn super saiyan 3 so yeah, that's kind of nuts she's like okay which level should i go oh yeah maybe i need three to defeat her so yeah, her body has like this big glow her hair is kind of like spiking up and now she's just like super strong super fast and like punching shushu and she can also fly so yeah, this is a cool fight because shushu is kind of outmatched she can't really aim properly because she's just too big so that what she does is she kind of like belly flops jumps on her and it kind of crushes her but the thing is where she just goes uncontrollable past her limits and just like beats everyone into discriminately so i thought that was interesting kind of like a broken level of ability they just pulled out of nowhere like oh if you defeat her she'll just go another level but yeah i mean i didn't really expect shushu to win because then the whole squad seven will have no need to fight a third round so yeah they need someone to lose here shushu feels kind of sad because she lost in front of yuki she developed feelings for him and then she kind of kisses him because she feels jealous that the other girls get to kiss him as well another kind of pseudo reward but yeah she did this of her own volition also her titties were out because like her shirt got ripped during the fight <laughs> so that was also kind of funny but you know a lot of like cool solid fan service this episode very nice also after that as round three of the tournament continues they're getting attacked so there are some villains out here some more waifu villains we see yachiho the time girl fighting this dude with like explosion magic beams yachiho's doing all that she can to stall him delay his attacks and then you know rewind if she gets injured also yeah her arm gets cut off by one of the beams but she can still do a pose with her legs <laughs> so i thought that was kind of funny she doesn't need both of her arms to pose and also after that we do see the commander of her squad coming through to protect her and her power she seems to burn all these shukis like immediately so she has like some op ass fire aoe ability maybe can't really be fucked with we gotta see but yeah really loving the fights in this anime really loving the fan service very nice all right so we got the witch and the beast episode five so yeah i've been watching this anime not really talking about it too much but yeah we got like a lot of cool like magic related stories here it is kind of like a new story where just like undead kind of like attacking being rogue so they hire like a new undead lady to investigate it so yeah, this necromancer girl, her name is Fanora, and then they found out the culprit, who's like this dude who's like kind of obsessed with his dead wife, and then she kind of like got in an accident, her skin got burned. So he's kind of doing all these necromancy experiments to kind of like enhance his skill, so he can like bring his wife back in the perfect condition. But yeah, Fanora, she's very mad. She's also a witch, which we discover. So yeah, we got a witch also working for the Magic Association. She's not evil. And then she has like her whole army of undead that she summons to also attack this dude. Like I'm really enjoying the anime, like the action scenes are nice, the 
kind of fantasy elements are pretty sick not really any complaints i think it's just that i it, i need to see where the story goes it's kind of taking its time but besides that yeah we got some witch waifus this episode we got some good fights i guess i'll keep watching the anime to see where it'll go next and finally we got buchi giri episode five what a funny episode bro shit's just progressing <laughs> every episode kind of makes me question origin like bro are you serious this one we see him joining shindo in the minato gang and he's all naked like with his boxers on i'm like bro didn't you punch this guy last episode and we realized he had a stand so it looks like he's kind of bribing origin he offers him sex he also sees that origin might have a honky like genie stand power so he's trying to keep it down low, but yeah, they both have genie stand powers. So it, it looks like their powers don't really affect each other either. So yeah, they're battling. We see Matakara coming in. He's kind of shocked that Arajit is like, you know, hanging out with this guy. But Matakara kind of gets beaten because yeah, this dude does have stand ability. Can't really fuck with him. So yeah, Matakara is kind of begging Arajin, Can you like, you know, send me free? This third part is kind of baiting you guys. But yeah, he doesn't want to hear any of it. Bro, the writers did a good job making Arajin so annoying. Like I, I know, I know they're cooking some. We're, we're still five episodes in, but they're going to redeem him somehow he's gonna have an explanation on why he's like such a pussy or it's kind of funny because like when everything's escalating the two gangs are squaring off arjun's kind of talking to shindo we got his backstory where the kind of main dude from the minato gang kenichiro he kind of like defended him one day and then that kind of motivated shindo to get stronger <laughs> so it does get stronger he kind of joins the minato gang but then he gets a bit salty because he loses one of the sparring battles so he kind of pulls out this metal weapon and then kenichiro's like bro you can't do that he blocks the metal with his skin that they just shatters and then yeah kenny Chiro kind of kicks him out of the gang so, yeah, that's why he's kind of making his own gang he's so salty and then he has the stand power so he can like kind of create his own army but after that he kind of unknowingly gets origin mad because he's like maybe after beating jin's gang i'll take mahoro so yeah that got origin so mad because mahoro is his girl uh, or, or so he thinks so he, he also has IBS, so he's about to shit his pants, but he's so angry. So he kind of uses the power of shitting his pants and his horniness for Mahara to kind of punch Shindo in the face. So that kind of like baits the whole gang to go after Arjun. And now like all three parties are converging together. It looks like we couldn't stop the gangs from fighting. So yeah, Matakara shows up with his friend, but it seems to be too late as the episode ends. So yeah, I guess sick gang fight coming in next episode. We'll see. But yeah, there might be some swerves, some plot twists. But this anime has been very honest with us. Not too many plot twists, but like a lot of crazy developments from origin himself but everything else with the gangs like people fighting seems like pretty on the nose all right so we're gushing over magical girls nothing much to talk about i'll keep this like less than a minute but we got infantilism <laughs> so yes just turning into a baby yeah oh we see the pink haired girl doing that it was it was a bit funny very uncomfortable but they're giving the little girl villain with the doll powers a lot of features in these past two episodes so <laughs> yeah i guess all three girls are doing their thing but yeah the magical girls keep losing <laughs> like i want them to get a bit stronger so they can kind of fight back but yeah, they're basically subject to this torment episode by episode and yeah that is it for the animes this week thank you for watching you know leave a comment please let me know what your favorite shows this week were but yeah really loving free run the anime is amazing solo leveling keeps heating up so yeah as an action show this season this anime does have some cool moments dangerous in my heart you know it's super cute again you know great romance show and all these other shows keep continuing with good stories undead unluck as well so yeah that's it for the shows this week